Okay, let's talk about creating and using an AO ambient occlusion uh, in V-Ray. Now, this is fairly simple to set up, uh, easier to set up than you'd think. Uh, this is the render. Okay. So, what you need to do is you need to open your render setup. Now, your render setup's right here. And you're going to go over to your render elements. Now, I have all of these already here. I'll just delete these and re-add them. Okay, you click here, add. And you need this one, V-Ray Extra Text. So add that, and I'm going to add another one. Here, you have a texture which it will render out and it will save as a pass. Right now, there's no map here. So what you need to do is open your Material Editor and find in your Maps. You need to go V-Ray Dirt. Okay. And double-click on V-Ray Dirt. And normally what I'll do is I'll set this radius to 100. Right, plug this into here. Instance. Okay, so now you have this V-Ray dirt map as the texture. So what it's going to do, it's going to look at 100 millimeters around each of the objects and it's going to create a dirt which is white and black. Now the reason I've created two is I like to have one which is set at 100. I'll just change this to say 100. And sometimes I prefer 300. So that'll be 300 millimeters. The scene here I'm working in is millimeters. If you're working in centimeters, change that to 10. If you're working in inches, set it to, to a different number, whatever you feel it should be. Okay, what I'm going to do is create another V-Ray Dirt. Double click on this and set this to 300. And then drag this one over here to this 300 one. Okay. And then when you click render, you end up with your render. And if you look through here, the different ones you have, you look at the extra text 100, it comes out like that. And extra text 300, it comes out like that. Now, the reason this is black here is this is flip faces, and I should probably deal with that. Um, but that's a modeling issue here. Uh, that's not an issue to do with the, the render. Now, here it's very dark as well. So I'll show you how I deal with that in post-production. So if I take this render, Normally, well, this is saved out at 32-bit, which uh, brings up another point here. When I save out my renders, I'm going to go V-Ray in the frame buffer. I'll click here. I'll click here, and I'll tell it where to save. And, uh, and I use OpenEXR all the time, and I click Save. Okay. Now... When it renders, it's going to save all of the different passes in uh, one file, one opening Excel file, which will be 32-bit. So, you know, having said that, you have various options of DBXR here and 32-bit output here, and I always just leave those off. Uh, uh, you know, you can turn them on, but then you're going to have to do separate search on how to use these properly. Um, but for now, I just leave those off. It's just easier and makes for a slightly smaller file. So this is my render. Now, to open it up with all of these passes in, because if I have that opening XR and then I, I double-click to open it in Photoshop, it won't open with all these passes. It will open with one of these. So to get this sorted out so you can open up these EXRs, uh, if you just Google Pro EXR, you find these guys, Pro EXR Fnord. And this is all free now. They used to pay for this. I had paid for this originally, but uh, I believe now they have some sort of deal with Adobe. I think Adobe's paid them to use their plugin, uh, but it's not actually yet incorporated in, in any of the Adobe software, but that, that will be in the future. So you click on there and you save it. You come here, you open it, and it has all of these in here. You want the Photoshop one, 64-bit I have installed. Easy as the original free one that they had, uh, which was just, you know, it would work for a period of time. And this is the one here which you need. Okay, so go to File Explorer, and you need to go to your Photoshop uh, folder, which is, if you go to C, Program Files, Adobe, Photoshop, use whichever version you're currently using. You need plugins, and you'll see I've got it right there. So you just need to literally take this, and drag it over and drop it. Now, with that, when you open your EXI, it will come in here with all of the layers. 
Okay, so next what I'm going to do is, because this is 32-bit, Photoshop doesn't work very well with 32-bit files. All of these layer adjustments that are grayed out, I cannot use. So I come up here, I go Image, Mode, 16-bit. Don't merge. If you merge it, we'll merge them all together, and you get a bunch of other choices, but I don't want those merging. Now I can use these. So normally I just click on the first one, Shift, click on the bottom, click on this folder, change this to Helps. And I make sure these are all turned off. I don't want them on and all showing. I turn these off and move that above here. Okay, then go to the RGB layer. I use the curves. I just make some little adjustments to get this a little bit closer to what I want. Something like that. Uh, sometimes I use an exposure adjustment to do something similar. Lower this point down just ever so slightly to get more contrast and brighten it. But that can easily blow out or adjust the gamma. But often I'll use curves. And just to brighten it up, you know, get more life going on in the scene. Now, these are the two here which I have the 100, the 300. So I think I'm going to go with the 300. There's a little bit more going on here, a little bit more detail I can add. So, like I said, I don't want this blacks coming in and that black coming in. So I click down on this little button which adds a layer mask and I make sure I've got black over here selected and I don't want a clone stamp I want the brush you know sometimes the brush isn't there you've got pencil or something but if you do you can just hold on this and go on to brush instead control alt and right clicking on the mouse I can adjust the size so I really I want to get this down to about there and you'll see it says hardness here so if I come down that hardness goes higher and the hardness becomes less so let's get this opacity up to 100. And there we go, that should be about okay. So now with the mask selected and with black selected, I can paint on top of this and it will just hide out and get rid of those areas. Again, that was Control Alt and right clicking. And just brush over there. And I don't like the darkness of this chair, this is a bit much, so. make it a little bit less hard. Come right down. Okay. Now also in these lights, you know there's lights in here which are shining and I don't want to make that light darker so I'm just going to brush that out as well. Alright. It's looking good. So next what I do, let me just delete this, is I will create an exposure. And then I click here and I make sure I've got this path selected. I press Control A for the whole thing. I've got these little lines around the outside now. Control C. Then I press Alt and I click on this, on this mask. And I press Control V, which brings that in. And then I press Control I to invert, this, invert the, the layer. So now I get that. So now... I can turn this off and double click here. I'll press, see these little dotted lines? I'm just going to press Control D to unselect. Okay. And then come down slightly on this and push this camera. This will make it darker. And to see if I come all the way up, it's going to get really dark. So I don't want that. I just want just to touch. Turn it off and on. You can see it. So it just makes the edges, gives you a little bit more detail, you know, makes the edges, the corners a little bit darker, makes it easier to see where the walls meet and different geometry meets and so on and so forth. Now, like I said, we've got this darkness down here and this is becoming darker, the, the fire and in the light. So I made this mask over here. So what I'm going to do is I press shift, click on the folder, which puts this layer now inside a folder. I double click on the name and I'll change this to AO, press enter. And then this layer mask I created, I'm going to drag that down and put it there. Now if I uh, press the backslash, you'll see that's what's masked, all these red points. I press backslash again. Um, and now if I turn this off and on, you'll see it doesn't do this area. It doesn't do that area. Now inside the fire here, you can see the area I've masked out. So I'm just going to do that a little bit better. Let's make it a bit bigger and the hardness lower. 
and I'm just going to brush over that. Okay. There we go. And that's how I use the AO uh, in 3ds Max and with V-Ray. Now, one other thing uh, to cover. Some people, they use it like this. They, they'll take this layer, which we created before, um, and they will change this layer, and they will just go normal, and they will put it on multiply. And then what they do is they lower this opacity. Now, this is fine, and I do use this sometimes, you know, and then if I press Alt and drag this mask, it'll put that mask back in place. Okay, so... You know, and I can lower that opacity even more, get something similar to the other one. Now, the reason I don't really use this, and I use the other method, I use this method, is because this layer, if you look at this layer, this is black. And so when you put it on multiply, you're literally bringing black into the scene. So you're not darkening the color that's there, you're bringing black in. Whereas when I use the exposure, I'm darkening the existing color. So that doesn't bring the black into the scene, that just darkens what's already there. And I feel that looks more natural and more real. But like I say, you know, I do occasionally just use this. I want sometimes that black coming into the scene. Uh, not very often. So this is definitely my preferred uh, choice, and this is definitely what I normally use. Um, but those are the two different ways which you can use an AO and how you can put it into the scene.